do. Well, Happy New Year, everybody. Here we are again at the start of a new church year, the season of Advent, the four weeks leading up to Christmas, typically a season that emphasizes hope, expectation, peace, joy, all of that stuff we look forward to, of course, in the incarnation and the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. But I have to confess to you something this morning. I'm now five years into ordained ministry, and I'm gonna give you a little hint, a little inside baseball when it comes to preaching. After a while, being in church land and before that, being trained in seminary, every so often, you're called upon to preach, and you've heard these texts before, and you have no idea what to do, which was definitely the case for me this week. And so, as I was sort of going through the Gospel of Mark, which we start this year, and going through the, the uh, visions, or not visions, but the parables of Jesus, and the sayings of Jesus talking about the end of the world and the coming of the Son of Man, I sat there thinking to myself, what the heck am I going to do with this? What words can I say to bring in something new? Something that I haven't said before. Something that will highlight the importance of this Advent season. How am I going to speak to hope, expectation, peace, and joy? And up until yesterday, I had no clue. And then yesterday, as I often do, not out of any sense of piety, um, but as a desire to hear the Word of God as a minister and as a Christian, I often uh, go to a different worship service on Saturday, sometimes a Catholic Mass, sometimes it's a worship service somewhere else. And I go to hear so that I'm not always in work mode. Because I love being here, and I love celebrating, and I love preaching. But sometimes it's a different approach, right? When you come as somebody in the pew. And so often, I will come and I will worship. And it wasn't until last night that I heard all three readings read to me by somebody else. And it stressed to me the importance of two things. One is hearing the word spoken out loud. The importance of us gathering to hear scripture, to engage with what God is trying to say to us through the prophets, through the letters of Paul, through the Psalms, and through the gospel. But also, it highlighted for me last night the wisdom of the lectionary, because as I was listening to all three readings, from Isaiah, Psalm 80, the portion from Corinthians, and of course, the section from Mark that leads us into this whole idea about Jesus' second coming. As I heard all of those three readings, or four readings put together, I started to notice something. Each of the readings this week contains a plea for God to show His face. To show up. Right? And so, in the reading from Isaiah that we get this morning, it comes from a place of a people that have been living in exile for 70 odd years in Babylon. And now, they're coming back to the Promised Land after being sent home. After being free. And they're sent back home. And what do they find? They don't find what they're expecting. Right? The temple is destroyed. The people that are living now in the promised land of Israel and Judah, it's a different people. They speak a different language. 
They have different gods and different expectations. And so, the voice that we hear from Isaiah speaks of a people that comes back to a place that they think that they know. But it's totally different. And so they plead for God, come down, let the mountain shake and the earth melt. Right? They want God to show up. They want to know that God is still with them after all this time. They want to know that the potter that has crafted them from the earth is still willing to work with them and be with them. This, of course, leads us into the psalm that we hear, a portion of Psalm 80, and repeat it three times in the verses that we prayed this morning. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show us the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. There's a plea here for God, again, to show his face to make himself known, to be present to his people. And then, of course, in the Gospel, we get these words of Jesus, speaking about the coming of the Son of Man, about the breaking in of God's kingdom. So, just like the people in Isaiah's time, that are asking for the mountains to come tumbling down and for God's presence to be known in earthquakes and all kinds of different things. He's speaking of God showing up. And so, as I contemplated this thread, this hope of God showing up, and as I hear, as I hear the words, read aloud. I can't help but appreciate what a great setup that is for Advent. We are now entering a time, an intentional time, of three or four weeks where we are called upon to join our voices with the voices of Scripture. It's in this time in this short span of the church year, where we are called to look for God in our midst. So when Jesus speaks about in Mark's Gospel and in other places, but when Jesus speaks about the whole idea of keeping awake, keeping alert, keeping our eyes open, there's a couple things that we need to pick up on when we read those words. First off is where this is located in the Gospel. This is at the tail end of chapter 13. And then in the very next section, we have Jesus entering Jerusalem, getting ready to go to the chief city, the holy city, to be confronted by the religious authorities, to be condemned by the Roman oppressors, and to be sent to his death. A death that ultimately secures for us the forgiveness of our sins, it allows us to become new creations, and it allows us to see God face to face. Not in earthquakes or in the mountains melting away, but instead of a man hanging upon a cross, at one with our trials and our pain and our sorrow. Ultimately, it's a story that ends not with the cross, but with the empty tomb. And when Jesus speaks the words that are calling to mind the coming of the Son of Man, and he mentions, you know, Keep awake, keep alert, for you don't know when the Master is coming, whether it's in evening, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or in the morning. Keep awake, keep alert.
keep a loop. Each of those intervals of time highlights an important part of the passion narrative. In the evening, that's when the, the, that's when the disciples and the apostles can't stay awake. Right? They're falling asleep in the garden. It's at this time that Jesus is handed over to the authorities and stands trial. The Son of Man and his story continues at cockcrow as he is being tortured and beaten. The cock crows just as Peter is denying that Jesus is the Messiah. When dawn comes, Jesus is asked to take up his cross and march up the hill to Calvary. And in the morning, he hangs there for us out of love, out of hope, out of expectation. Expectation that God is here in any way. So we can't separate the story about God's love for us. And we can't separate the whole section about Mark's Gospel talking about the coming of the Son of Man without recognizing that he's right in our faces. Advent is also a time where we get to reflect on where we have been, where we are, and where we're going to. As we start this new year, we are invited to reflect upon and to engage with the ministries that we feel called to. It's the ministry of hope, of joy, of peace, and of expectation. And it's an exciting time. We come joining with our regional partners at St. Albans, where Bill is today celebrating. We join in knowing that when we gather in community, when we hear the word of God, when we are fed with the sacrament, God shows up in our midst, calling each one of us to say, where are you being called in this time and in this place? Where are you being called to serve, to reflect the light, the image and likeness of God to the world around you? How are we being called at St. Jude's and at St. Albans? And at, as the whole church, how are we being called to spread the joy, the peace, the hope, and the expectation? This is what we're being called to in Advent. I pray that as we continue in this Eucharist, as we continue in our week, and indeed, as we continue in our church year, we keep our eyes open, awake and alert for God's presence. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show us the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved.